Do Q2 uses signed certs to get into Kapersky, LastPass was breached, and the Cardinals are getting their hack on. All that and more coming up on ThreatWire. I'm Shannon Morrison. This is ThreatWire for June 17, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Hey, we have tons of news today, so let's go ahead and get right to it. First off, signed digital certificates. Those have been used for years to prove authenticity for a site or a service, but when those certs are stolen, things could get a little bit sticky. So most recently, it's been discovered that the nation-state malware called DoQ 2.0, yes, it's called DoQ, used a signed digital certificate from Foxconn. You know, those are the guys that are from Taiwan and they make electronics for, let's see, Apple and Google and Dell to hack into Kapersky, a leading security firm and hotels that were used during the UN Security Council and Iranian nuclear negotiations. The hackers had to get Foxconn's signed certificate so that they could sign their malware with the digital certificate. Now, researchers believe that the attack originated from the same hackers that did the DoQ attack in 2011 to European networks and possibly it's Israel based. Now the DoQ malware has many parts that are identical to Stuxnet, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So DoQ 2.0 is thought to be the newest form. All three of these have used digital certificates from Taiwan based companies on their malware software. And the software is loaded onto the praise machines and used for data theft and reconnaissance. Now companies use signed digital certificates to legitimize their applications, their drivers, their software of all sorts, and it's been used for a long time. Since this kind of malware has been affecting networks for several years now, this begs the question of how reliable the certificates are if they're being used so often to infect. Next up is all about LastPass, an online subscription-based password manager, which just happened to be breached in a hack on Monday, June 15th. In the breach, email addresses, password reminders, aka the little reminder that you remind yourself of for your password, the server per user salts, and authentication hashes were compromised. The authentication hash is used to verify a user when they sign in via their computer and is salted and has 100,000 rounds of server-side encryption. So basically, that means Means that it takes a really long time to decrypt the hashes and figure out the account credentials. Now, if a password reminder made it incredibly easy to figure out your password, like your mother's maiden name, which somebody could look up on Facebook, well, you might want to change your master password then as well. LastPass is requiring new devices to be verified via email unless using two-factor or multi-factor authentication. Users will also be asked to update their master password. User data from the user's vault were not stolen, so passwords stored inside the password manager are okay. LastPass also warned that if you use your master password on another site, change both immediately. But folks, don't freak out. Chances are you are safe. Just remember, one, change your master password and make it really, really hard to guess. Two, use two-factor or multi-factor authentication, which you can set up in the settings. Number three, make your password reminder something that's a bit obscure and hard to figure out. And four, if you use the master password elsewhere, which you shouldn't do anyways, change those two. You could just not use LastPass as well if that's your thing, and there are plenty of alternatives. And from the OMG really part of the internet, the FBI is keeping an eye on the St. Louis Cardinals, who may have hacked into the Houston Astros network to steal player personnel information and files. This would have included trade discussions, scouting reports, and proprietary stats about the team. Subpoenas have been served on the Cardinals and the MLB, and would be the first of its kind to be committed by a professional sports team, or somebody that's working for the team. <laughs> the hack is believed to be unsophisticated in nature, simply performed with passwords from an associate who moved to the Astros team after working with the cards. Get your game on? Our featured comment today comes from SickNick64, who in response to Patrick's show on Monday says, It's as if the setting of Splitter Cell, chaos theory, has come to life. It's a never-ending battle to one-up each other in terms of security. I make this, I patch this, patch broken, repatch, repeat. To speak from the server's point of view, some just can't afford to patch their systems properly. Unless it's made from scratch and maintained by the original creator, it requires hiring someone to look into the server and fix the necessary bugs, or if someone 
who knows how to upgrade the server's software properly, not to mention buying the updated software and having a legal registered copy. Improper install of software leads into a whole nother problem. The problem focuses on the host of the server. If they can't keep up, they put themselves and all users at risk. Thank you. Yes, I agree. And this is why it's so, so important to know what's going on in security and privacy. Yes, it's a never ending loop of repatching and updating and breaches over and over and over again. But what other choice do we have? Should we just give up? I mean, you're right. If you can't keep up, you put yourself at risk. So thank you so much for the comment, SickNick64. And if you have any thoughts on today's stories, leave them below in the comments. FYI, there are a few other really great stories that we don't have time to report on today, so I've included those links below. Specifically, emojis instead of pin codes for banks. Apparently that's a thing. Samsung phones have a keyboard vulnerability. That's not good. And Google has an Android bug bounty problem program. That is good. <laughs> now, before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon. If you can spare a few cents per episode, check out patreon.com slash threatwire. That's where you can support us. This show will not have any ads ever, and it's always going to be independent. So it's going to be up to all of us, me and you, to keep it going. Now, if this information is important to you, check out our page on Patreon. We even have a perk for contributors where you can have your fur baby in the show like this one. I like chili. Chili's adorable. <laughs> Threatwire.net is the site for all the news that we've been reporting on. And with that, I'm Shanna Morse. I will see you on the internet.